More than two years ago, a team of explorers led by scientist Vladimir Melikov were on an expedition within the Russian caves on Mount Bolshoi when they made a miraculous discovery. Reports from Russian newspapers at the time indicated that a briefcase and two alien-like skulls were discovered in the cave systems of the Caucasus region. What is amazing about the briefcase is the insignia which can be found upon its front. It is the emblem of the Anenerbi, once the Nazi's most secretive institutions. Founded by Heinrich Himmler in 1935, their mission was to find evidence that the Aryan race had once ruled the entire world. But they also branched into occultism, paranormal research, pseudoscience, and the study of UFOs and weapons development. All due to Himmler's obsession with such things. The strange appearance of the skulls has led to speculation that the Nazis were in contact with aliens. Mr. Melikov was reported as saying the creature is unlike anything known to man. He said among the most mysterious features of the skulls is the absence of a cranial vault or jaws. The eye sockets are also unusually large. He added, even when compared with the skull of a bear, it is hard to think that you do not have in your hands the remains of an alien creature. Paleontologists in Moscow were shown pictures of the skulls. They reportedly dismissed the skulls, saying they could have been exposed to sand for long periods of time, which could have altered their shape. Russian newspaper reports have also recorded other German discoveries in the area, including last summer when Elbrus Hunters found a second suitcase with the Anenerby logo. It is thought to have belonged to the huntsman of the German division Edelweiss, and was found along with a ring showing a soldier in a mountain cap and a Nazi uniform. The Edelweiss was an emblem of the German mountain troops during World War II. Also in 2014, reports said locals in the same area found the burial site of German infantry, believed to have been killed in an avalanche years earlier. What do you think about the finds? Are these skulls proof that the Nazis knew of the existence of aliens? Or maybe that they were even in contact with such entities? The skulls and briefcase are now said to be stored at an archaeological complex in Belovode, a site which stores many historical artifacts. Further studies are desperately needed before they vanish from public view. Dr. Hermann Oberth, who pioneered rocket design during World War II, once cryptically stated, quote, We cannot take the credit for our record advancement in certain scientific fields. We have been helped. When asked by whom, he replied, The people of other worlds. Additionally, according to Above Top Secret by Timothy Good and William Morrow, Oberth's fellow space pioneer, Werner von Braun, echoed this mysterious reference, even including the existence of extraterrestrials, when he stated in 1959, quote, We find ourselves faced by powers which are far stronger than hitherto assumed, and whose base is at present unknown to us. More I cannot say at present. We are now engaged in entering into closer contact with those powers and within six or nine months' time, it may be possible to speak with more precision on the matter." End quote. Just who were the people of other worlds that Dr. Oberth spoke of? Or indeed, these entities that von Braun referred to? With only Oberth's quotations, one could presume a possible reverse engineering of alien craft. However, with von Braun's more detailed expose, this possibility seems to be excluded in favor of pertained actual assistance and contact with advanced beings. Many people also believe that an encounter with these beings, along with Third Reich craft built with their technology, was once encountered in an operation known as Operation High Jump. According to certain independent researchers, Richard E. Byrd, admiral of this operation, possibly encountered a hostile, formidable opponent, who he has claimed to have described as fighters that were able to fly from one pole to another with incredible speed. In reality, however, whatever Bird's expedition experienced may never be fully publicly disclosed, as all reports, including Bird's personal log entries, remain mysteriously classified. But the connections between these curious quotations, and indeed the rumored encounters by this classified operation, are certainly intriguing. Furthermore, Operation High Jump was originally organized by Secretary of the Navy James Forrestal. Interestingly, in 1949, Forrestal was sent to recover from a supposed nervous breakdown at Bethesda Naval Hospital. However, 
After allegedly ranting to staff about the Antarctic, UFOs, and an underground Nazi city, Forrestal was denied all visitors. Shortly after, he mysteriously died in a fall from his hospital room window. What did Forrestal know? Were his perceived delusional rants based upon reality? According to the legend of the German Vril Society, a secret remote viewing was held in 1919 at an old hunting lodge near Brechtsgaden. During this event, Maria Arsic, a self-proclaimed medium, presented her supposed telepathic messages, which she claimed to have received from an extraterrestrial civilization existing in the constellation of Taurus. It is reported that these messages contained instructions for building a circular flight machine. It is interesting to note that German Oriental scholars and occultists alike regarded such mystic teachings with complete seriousness, with well-documented, well-funded, diligent efforts put forth to discover and such individually proclaimed powers and their messages therein into viable technological realities. What happened in the Antarctic? Who were these people from other worlds that von Braun and Oberth spoke of? Did the Third Reich make contact with an alien or possible highly advanced once ancient civilization, allowing them to engineer mystifying technologies? We find such claims, rumors, and fragments of evidence to support such possible realities highly compelling. The mystery of the Bandado buckets has persisted throughout the modern age, ever since the study of the incredible history of the Assyrian civilization began. What these mysterious containers were remains unknown. What were their significance, or indeed contents? Intriguingly, the buckets were often, but not exclusively accompanied, by what is commonly argued today as a Turkish pine cone. One of the main driving factors in the continued mystery surrounding the curious objects is the fact that any explanatory texts regarding these objects are extremely rare. It does, however, seem likely that they were together employed in rituals of purification. This revealed by their Akkadian names, which were fortunately mentioned by this mysterious group, Bendudu, meaning bucket, and Melillo as in purifier. It is thus argued that the fur cone would be dipped in the bucket filled with blessed water before being shaken upon a subject in order to ritually purify it. Alternatively, however, the close association of the objects with the depiction of specific tree species has led to the suggestion that objects represent fertilization. Thus, it is further suggested that in this case, the pollen from the male flower of the date palm would be shaken onto the female tree in question. It would seem like so many things within ancient antiquity. We can identify said anomaly, but its true grandeur, importance, and indeed origins remain a complete mystery. Could this continued mystery be incentivized by it possibly being an advanced technology? Possibly an ancient upart? There is much regarding these specific ages academia claims to know so well, yet when one looks at said awareness, gaps suddenly appear. Entire chapters, including the true purpose of the Bandudu buckets, either remains missing or possibly hidden from mainstream study. They are, undoubtedly, highly compelling. Although little known, within the regions of Tibet and India, more than 160,000 documented cases of people transforming into a body of light energy exist. Although scoffed at by modern science, this hard-to-believe claim has also been made throughout the ages by numerous figures, religions, and even scientific journals and research, commonly known as the rainbow body. Although this can vary from region to region, within Islamic areas, for example, it is known as the most sacred body or the supra-celestial body. Yogic schools in tantric teachings call it the divine body, while in Kriya Yoga it is referred to as the body of bliss. Taoists refer to it as the diamond body, and those who have attained it are named the immortals or the cloud walkers. The ancient Egyptians called it the luminous being, pronounced as karast. In the Mithraic liturgy, it was dubbed as the perfect body. 
the hermetic corpus referred to it as the immortal body, while in the emerald tablets it is named the golden body. Tibetan monks have even been said to have reached this state within the last century. The documented case of Kenpo Acho in 1998, for example, documented by Catholic priest Francis Tiso, a Jalupa monk of Kham, Tibet, he is said to have managed to transform his body into a body of light, an event witnessed by the entire monastery and indeed Francis himself. David Steindl Ross conducted a scientific investigation with the Institute of Noetic Sciences in 2002 with the sole aim of studying the phenomenon of the rainbow body, saying that, quote, if we can establish it as an anthropological fact, then the resurrection of a figure such as Jesus has not only happened, but is happening today. It would put our view on human potential in a completely different light, end quote. According to Father Tiso, Kenpo Cho's body started changing soon after his last breath. His skin turned shiny white, and his appearance began to change. Kenpo Achos was eventually wrapped in a yellow robe which all Jalug monks wore. As the days passed, the body of Kenpo Acho started shrinking, and after seven days had passed, no light remained. The event was well recorded by local press who gave specific accounts of what had occurred, and the rainbow body event subsequently appeared in the Institute of Noetic Sciences Review 59, March to May 2002. Astonishing claims will obviously require astonishing evidence and with capabilities of technology since Kenpo's passing have dramatically improved, it may only be a matter of time before this remarkable phenomenon is recorded and documented beyond doubt. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care. Since the incident at Roswell, many UFO enthusiasts have been certain that Earth has been visited by extraterrestrial beings. Many claiming that the incident was indeed a UFO crash and that the U.S. government not only covered the event up, but seized the craft and have been busily attempting to reverse-engineer this technology ever since. These claims have been verified by a number of claimed whistleblowers who say they have worked on such projects at none other than Area 51 at Groom Lake. Since these claims were made, the CIA, along with many other bodies of U.S. government, have begun to release hundreds of files, including witness testimonies of countless military personnel and civilians, testimonies in satellite and radar tracks made by individuals who have either had an encounter or have experienced unexplainable events connected to mysterious craft, often moving at seemingly impossible speeds or shutting down missile silos. These events would undoubtedly be a worry to the powers that be. The concern is that a hostile nation may have developed or successfully reverse-engineered these technologies in secret. However, there is also overwhelming evidence to suggest that these sightings were not of man-made craft, but indeed that of extraterrestrial life. For not only are these craft witnessed over sensitive military complexes, but a number of experiences have also surrounded schools two of which we thought were compelling enough to bring to the forefront of our studies, this due to the number of eyewitnesses and what their testimony suggest. Although the accounts from a school in Zimbabwe were initially discredited, regardless of the fact that over 20 students witnessed a craft land in the school field, with the students subsequently going to meet the landing craft and being no more than arm's reach from the beings that emerged, Many scientists and psychologists have attempted to discredit the event by putting it down to mass hysteria. The witnesses to this event continue to argue that it did indeed occur. Furthermore, supporting their claims, other encounters have been experienced at other schools around the globe. At approximately 11 a.m. on Wednesday, the 6th of April, 1966, Students and a teacher from Westall High School in Australia reported seeing a flying object, described as a gray or silvery-green saucer-shaped craft with a slight purple hue and about twice the size of a family car. According to the students, the object was descending, overflew the high school, and disappeared behind a stand of trees. Approximately 20 minutes later, the object reportedly reappeared climbed at speed and departed towards the northwest. 
some accounts describe the object as being pursued by five unidentified aircraft. Thanks to these, and thousands, possibly millions of other testimonies from people of countless disciplines, the acceptance that these craft exist has been forced upon the U.S. government and other governments globally. It would seem full disclosure, rather than the trickle we see now, is not a case of if, but is now one of when. It is a pursuit of truth which we find highly compelling.